Hello and welcome back to the channel, Cities In. Uh, we're doing another programming series video today. We got our program back here. It's called Wackadoodle. And uh, we're using the honking heckin' buttons from the SFGE uh, Vintage Computer Festival Southeast that we did last year with the prize wheel except we're taking it one step further and if you don't know this thing hooks up to the joystick port and it lights up uh, using a relay through the user port and uh, if anybody's interested in how I did it I can do an in-depth uh, detailed thing about it but it's in our the construction is in our video from last year when we did a SFGE or the Vintage Computer Festival Southeast so look forward to the wackadoodle program. I'm going to put it out on CSDB and everything. And it will work with just a regular joystick. So that being said, during the creation of the wackadoodle program, I was uh, trying to figure out how to do timing. And I got it down right now. So I wanted to share with everyone my simple knowledge. Right? I'm not a... Pr a professional expert Commodore 64 programmer but I do know this I can get things working and when I do I'm going to share that information with you so today we're doing the IRQ timing routines and I'm just going to make a simple program to uh, demonstrate its capabilities so just hang tight right <gasps> okay let's get started first thing we're going to want to do is do our basic upstart and that is the built-in kick assembler basic upstart macro this is just to give it a uh, a basic way to start the program from basic it'll add a line number and stuff like that and let you run it all right so we're gonna create a start label here I'm gonna go ahead and fill out all the labels we're gonna have a main loop so we do a jump to main that'll close that loop um, what other function will we need here let's see we're going to do a reset timers function. Well, subroutine, I should say. RTS out of that. And now close that. We'll fill these in later as we go. This, this here is the routine for the actual IRQ. And uh, at the end of these IRQs uh, functions subroutines we want to go and uh, put a jump to EA31 and that will it'll it'll give control back to the Commodore uh, system jumps and things like that so first of all I'm not an expert programmer Commodore 64 programmer I think I've said it before but uh, you know I'm excited because I learned about how to do this and I want to share it with everyone so that's what I'm doing here I'm just we're just gonna write it out we're gonna share I'm gonna share with you what I've learned right so this, I got all this stuff filled out um, there's another thing um, we need to do for this I'm gonna this is gonna cover two timers right so we're gonna create some variable space down at the bottom at the very end and uh, we'll call it IRQ timer one put a dot byte zero in there and then do IRQ timer two put another byte zero and uh, these are just placeholders right so we can call them from the uh, program trig, and then trig one IRQ timer trig one and IRQ timer trig two Oh, I need a byte in there. Byte zero. Same thing. Dot byte zero. These are just one one byte variable locations that we can modify. 
So now that we've got the variable space down here, we put var space comment. So pretty much four bytes. And now let's jump back up to the top. Um, yeah. So we have the reset timers subroutine. And what we want to do here is I'll just do a copy of that little block and I'll put it in here and uh, tab these out, take the bytes out. Take out the colons on the end, and then load the accumulator with zero. And uh, in each one of these, we want to store the accumulator. So we're going to store zero in all the variable bytes, and that way we can reset the timers from up here. Jump subroutine, reset timers. Of course, it's obviously already going to be set to zero, right? But we're just going to do it anyway, in case we want to reset the timers at any point, right? So now, um, in order to create interrupt requests on Commodore 64, you have to set this flag, let's set the interrupt flag, and then we can actually mess around with the IRQ vectors, and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to load the accumulator with the low byte of IRQ timers, store that in 0314, which is the low byte of the IRQ vector, and then load accumulator with the high byte of IRQ timers, and then store it in 0315, which is the high byte. And then we're going to clear the interrupt flag and that'll give control back to the Commodore. And so instead of wherever it was at, you know, 0314 and 0315, that vector, it's going to go here now. And it'll jump immediately to EA31 at that point, right? So we can essentially, this happens, this is going to interrupt once every screen cycle, right? So if you're on NTSC, it's going to be 60. If it's on PAL, it's going to be 50. But this, these timers should work with either system, but with this method that we're going to use. So um, let's go ahead and fill out the IRQ timers um, interrupt routine. And so what we're going to do with this. The very first thing is for every cycle, we're going to in increment the IRQ timer 1 and increment IRQ timer 2. Okay, pretty simple, right? So then the next thing we want to do is load the IRQ timer 1 value and then we're going to compare it. What are we going to compare it to? We want one second. We want this to be a one second timer, so for every cycle, uh, it, it, for like NTSC, it's 60 times a second. So if we do 60 in here, that's one second, right? Simple, right? So far. And we're going to branch if it's not equal to, uh, let's make a label here, IT. Oh, that's got to be a plus. So, if it's not yet reached 60 cycles, just skip over this next part. But if it does reach 60 cycles, we want to uh, increment the IRQ timer trigger 1. Alright. And then we'll just load the accumulator with 0, store in IRQ timer 1, kind of like as a reset. Yeah. And then for the second timer because we got two timers remember we can do it all we can add as many timers as we want using this method all right so for this one I copied the first block and then we're gonna update all this other stuff down here to make sure it says two and then for here instead of 60 we're gonna go 120 
right? We'll make it a two second timer. So the first timer is a one second timer, and the second is a second, two second timer. Wow. There, don't worry, there's not going to be a quiz, you know, but actually there is. I want to see what you guys create. I'm excited to see what you guys can create with the, your new knowledge of how to make timers. And you can do anything you want. I'm just going to do something simple, right? So that should do it for the interrupt request here. That's your interrupt routine. And then it'll jump back to the Commodore 64 gobbledygook kernel routines and whatever right but once we set that up now it's just gonna go right it's gonna go how it goes now we'll go back to our main but before we do that let us let's do some uh, let's let's take it back a few steps get back to some basics here we're gonna load the accumulator with zero store it D020 and D021 clear background black right and then we'll also want to do 93 load accumulated with hex 93 jump subroutine FFD2 print out that's the clear character so that's how you clear the screen so now we have a blank screen to work with and to make things easy, I think we're just going to update the first and second memory locations of screen memory. And that'll be easy. So, now, we're jumping around in this loop. It's just looping. How are we going to figure out what, when our timer is triggered? Well, it's easy. We load the accumulator with uh, IRQ timer trig one imagine that and this is to check to see if trigger one is set now the check will be in the branch of equals to main loop plus so this means that if there's a zero in the trigger it hasn't been triggered yet so it's not yet one second so we just go to ML the next label and what I like to do whenever I'm branching to labels, I, I like to go ahead and write out the label because that's some good practice. It keeps things kind of in a framework. And it, this also applies to other coding languages if you're doing stuff outside of Commodore 64 stuff. So now that we're in, we, we got into this little branch here, right? That means that the trigger has happened. Now, what are we going to do? Like I said, we're going to do, we're going to increment the first screen location, which is 0400 hex. Increment first screen mem location. Pretty simple, huh? So far. Now, we're also going to do, we, we're going to reset this one timer because we want it all to be reset so it'll take another one second to get back to do another one right it'll update the memory again in one second after that so we do both IRQ timer trig one and IRQ timer one there may be a lot better way to do all of this but I'm just telling you what works for the application that I worked with all right and that's why I'm sharing it with you because it's awesome. So now we got that block there. It's going to increment the first memory location. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that whole block. And then we're going to put two in each where it, place where it says two, right? So two. Timer trig two. Timer two. But, and also increment the second screen memory location which is dollar sign 0401 or hex 0401 and uh, I mean that should be it like I said this is a very simple exercise and I'm sharing it with you guys alright so let's see what happens if I 
<clears throat> if I run this now, or assemble it, hang on a sec. Let me get this over here, and I'll restart it so you can see what it does. Ah, the screen. But anyway, yeah, look, it's incrementing the first memory location every one second and the second memory location every two seconds, which is the desired effect. And like I said, you can do anything you want with it, with these timers. I just happen to be showing you, like, how it works, right? So you can make sprites blink at certain intervals, like turn them on and off and do things like that. So I hope this helps some of y'all out. If you did, if you'd liked it, make sure to leave a like, you know, leave a comment. Let, us, let me know what you're working on. Share with us your things. I want to see them, you know, Commodore 64. Yeah, man. All right. See you later. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of our new programming series. And be sure to check out all the other vintage computer related videos on our channel. Right here on City Zen.